So guys, welcome back to RBR and welcome to the new E-Class All-Terrain. We're in an amazing surrounding at the moment in Solden in Austria. And we're gonna check out what this new off-roading or slightly light off-roading version of the E-Class is like versus the standard one that we've driven. It's a bit of an important car because it's the only wagon that you can get in the USA as well. And there's a bunch of features that come standard in this. So let's check out the brand new E-Class All-Terrain today. So guys, today's episode of RBR is sponsored by returning sponsor, The Ridge, the company that redefined our expectations of the wallet. And they're back with an absolutely awesome new addition, which is the first ever pure leather Ridge wallet. Now I'm gonna open these up, let's see what the leather ones are like versus the standard one. So guys, we've got two versions of the Ridge leather wallet here. One is the brown leather version, which is gorgeous, and the other is midnight black. Let's get this open. Oh wow, that is lovely, look at that. And this has had 18 months of development. It's the same great design as our classic. There's my awesome Forge Carbon with the red details, which is such an amazing version that they did. But this brown leather, this has been designed so it patinas as well, really well. You can replace the screws. Lifetime warranty, just like your other Ridge products. You can fit your cash in here. And of course, this has the same great RFID blocking technology to protect your cards from wireless thieves. Pop in my cards into the leather one as well doesn't bulge out of your pocket like a standard wallet either. So guys, that's the new Ridge leather wallet. I can't wait to see what it looks like when it ages. It's got that great 99 day test drive is all that you can take. And the same lifetime warranty because Ridge are so confident about their products. Use the link ridge.com forward slash RBR or my code RBR. You'll get 10% off your order. It's the perfect gift for yourself or someone that you care for because it is long lasting and it's gonna be used every day. So a huge thanks to Ridge. Thank you guys for supporting our regular sponsors as well. Now let's get back to the episode. So guys, here is the new E-Class All-Terrain, a really important car because it's the only wagon you can get in the US. And I'm gonna start off by breaking down what makes this car what it is. The first to really know is the design of the car, where it's got a lot more of the off-road injection of certain design elements into the standard E-Class body. So that's your standard E-Estate, which is actually a really sporty looking wagon, isn't it? From what we saw last time, it sits really low, looks amazing on those 20 inch wheels. Um, but when you turn it into an all-terrain, a number of things change. First of all, it's not AMG line, okay? It's more kind of based off the standard car. But what you do get is a lot more off-roading design bits. For example, we've got this front chrome, as you can see here, which is much like you see in the GLC and the GLS, etc., in the off-road design style. Our grille is different. You've still got the star pattern and you can get the illuminated grille, but it's got a double louvre, as again, you'd find in the SUVs. Much more obvious than that are our arches and the side sill, which are in a rougher black plastic material, again, denoting off-roading, a bit more utilitarian use, which is nice. You know, I'd actually like to see more of that. And we'll talk about that in a minute where they could have gone with this. And then finally on your rear bumper, again, a unique rear bumper with underguard protection, etc all more geared towards this idea of occasional off-roading. And finally, my favorite bit, which are the wheels, which again, these are not that off-roading, but they're really, really nice. They remind me of AMG alloys of the past, and they really suit the all-terrain, I think. And this is an E-Class estate that comes with a lot standard, which is great. So you always get formatic, and you always get air suspension, both on the front axle and on the rear axle, as standard, with ADS Plus, so it's adaptive damping per wheel as well, so you won't feel the shocks of the road hopefully, as we'll see later when you're driving. Of course, the car sits higher than your standard car. In off-road mode, it goes all the way up to 46 millimeters higher, so you've got some nice ground clearance. And the Santa gives versus that normal car is really quite nice as well. In terms of engines, we've got three to begin with in all-terrain. Our first is the car that we're driving today, which is the 220 diesel 4MATIC. And you also get a 300DE plug-in, which is great, and finally, an engine that we absolutely love, which is the 450 six-cylinder petrol formatic as well. So three really good and strong engines to begin the lineup. I've chosen the diesel because I want to see what this daily car is like in terms of miles per gallon, in terms of engine refinement in a newer Mercedes diesel, because this is not a standard Mercedes diesel as you've seen in the past. This is a mild hybrid setup with a bit of a boost thanks to the starter generator. And I'm hoping more refinement in terms of noise and power delivery because of that. 
The all-terrain takes its cues in design from the previous generation, and I think it looks really good in the W214. I do think, however, that they could have taken this idea of off-roading design and all-terrain a bit farther. I look at cars like 911's Dakar and the Cross Turismo and cars, maybe not the Cross Turismo, but certainly the Dakar and think they could have gone just a bit further. In fact, even that Maybach concept by Virgil Abloh and Mercedes Maybach, which showcased so many cool little off-road features in a luxury car. So I would have loved to have seen something taken from those cars, like some more extreme wheels and arches, uh, a roof rack with like canisters and other things, maybe a little ladder. I don't know, just some other off-roading elements that maybe you'd never use as an owner in some kind of off-road package that was optional, but it would make the car, you know, that much different to a standard E-Class estate. I think they missed a trick here. I think an off-road package with a big hit of off-roading, something from G-Wagon, taken from G-Wagon, would have been really quite interesting in this. Let me know what you guys think. Now, of course, this is the only wagon available in the United States, so an important car for you US viewers of RBR. So we're gonna discover how different is this to just buying a normal E-Class or an E-Estate, so we're gonna cover that as well. And let's see now what this E-Class all-terrain is like to drive in normal roads and a little bit of light off-roading. So guys, we have some absolutely spectacular views uh, to drive the all-terrain in here. We're near um, Solden in Austria at the moment, which is actually where they filmed uh, a good element of 007. So you can imagine it's pretty damn picturesque and the roads are gorgeous. So this is a car of two characters, I think. One, you've got the E-Class estate side of it and the whole luxury element of Mercedes-Benz, which is important. And then the other side is the perhaps infrequently used, but the kind of the off, the mild off-roading side of the E-Class all-terrain, which is important because this is where the niche is of this car, where you kind of need to use it sometimes in countryside, rough gravel terrain, light off-roading, it needs to be able to do that. So I'll show you those bits, I'll show you the off-road mode, etc. First, let's talk about how this car is to drive normally. Now, the great thing about all-terrain is it comes standard with Formatic, it comes standard with air suspension, with ADS Plus, so totally adaptive. What that basically means is it's really capable when it comes to attacking those imperfections in the road and making sure none of those translate into the cabin. And what you wind up with then is a really nice wafty ride in this all-terrain vehicle. So it very, very much has that E-Class character within this, which is very, very important because along with all the luxury of this new interior, if you haven't had a chance to look at my uh, E-Class review when I drove it, do look at that because you get a really good idea of just how fantastic the super screen is versus what I find to be the annoying hyperscreen in the EQs. With that luxury, you're expecting a nice and comfortable and luxurious drive, and you really do get that in the all-terrain. Don't think that just because you're buying this off-roady version, suddenly it's not gonna have that hit of luxury that you expect from a Mercedes-Benz. Today we're driving the E220 diesel 4MATIC, and it's actually a really refined engine, quite surprisingly so. I thought that I was gonna get like a grumbly old diesel engine, uh, being a 220 only, but this is really, really decent. It's got good power. Of course, we've got that mild hybridization within this as well, but surprisingly potent and surprisingly quiet in here as well. If anything, the whole kind of engine element kind of takes a back seat and you're just aware that you're driving a Mercedes that has just enough power to do what it needs to do. That's a comfort mode. We can put the car into sport as well, and it still remains refined. You just get that power a little bit earlier. It's a little bit more eager. The suspension still remains very, very plush, to be honest. It just firms up a little bit, which is actually quite nice. It's quite nice to be in sport mode. But really, it doesn't feel to me a million miles away from when I drove the standard E-Class Saloon, which is a good thing. I don't think you want a car that's compromised in any way in terms of luxury, because I see this 90% of the time being used for just daily activities, just with a bit more ruggedness, a bit more practicality. You can see even when pushing the diesel engine, it never becomes that horrible grumbly thing that we're used to. I really believe in the diesel. Now, coming up to this particular place where we wanted to drive the car, we drove for about three hours. It was something like, I'm going to estimate around 200 kilometers. And my fuel gauge has barely gone under a quarter, and I've still got 540 km estimated here, which is a mega, mega amount of range. I really believe in the diesel. I love how much torque you get out of these engines. The modern ones sound nice and quiet, bit of hybridization, and they feel 
really responsive as well. I hate how so many countries have demonized this technology because of the failings of a few. Honestly, pound for pound on a car like this, I would recommend the diesel almost every single time. A, bang for buck versus the more expensive plugins, etc. But just in terms of refinement and, you know, MPG, you can't beat it. Now we're climbing up this mountain at the moment and the engine is unflappable. Um, it doesn't feel like it's strained, doesn't feel like it's wanting for more power. And this is, of course, just your 220D. So even the entry-level version of your all-terrain, you know, it's not lacking power at all. It's giving the type of performance that you would expect from a car that looks like a nice rugged SUV as well. Now, the other side of this car is how does it handle uneven terrain? What's the off-road mode like? Let's go and check that out now. Right now, so we've got some looser terrain in front of us now. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into off-road mode here. You go into here, you activate drive program. You see the, you've got your engine, your suspension, your steering and your ESP all set specifically for off-roading. And it can only be used up to 110 kilometers an hour as well. The other thing we can do is change our screen now in front into our off-roading screen, which gives you a bit more information, steering angle, angle of descent, etc., etc. And we've got a secondary off-roading screen that gives us similar information on this side here as well. Now, this is that side of the all-terrain that gives it, you know, a bit more over the standard E-Class estate where it can deal with kind of slightly rougher terrain. And with the off-road driving program, like I said, you've got unique steering setup, suspension is a bit different, power delivery in terms of torque, and your ESP. So you're able to kind of maneuver the car and overcome the type of terrain that you just normally wouldn't in a normal E-Class estate. And that's kind of what gives it the edge over that car. It's when, you know, we're not just talking about gravel. We're talking about countryside, muddier roads, um, slightly uneven terrain as well. You know, the type of stuff that you wouldn't want to take a luxury saloon or luxury wagon into, that's where the all-terrain kind of comes into its own and it brings in some of the magic of the Mercedes SUVs in terms of the off-roading program, etc. You've got the height clearance and certainly the looks. It looks fantastic doing all of this, even when it gets dusty. And then you've got the added benefit of our wonderful invisible bonnet as well, which, as you can see here, when we creep forward, we can start to get an idea of exactly what's underneath us. Now, I don't expect this car to be heavily off-roaded, but it's nice to have that should you want to do something light on some uneven terrain. It's so clever. You can see the wheels turning. It's literally a live view of what is underneath your car. And then when you pick up enough speed, it kind of transfers into a view of what's in front of you. It's very clever, very, very clever indeed. Plus, it's also just really fun to drive in these type of terrains. Um, and the other cool thing about it is even though you've got more uneven terrain underneath you, it's all a bit bumpier, it maintains the level of luxury that a Mercedes-Benz should, which is really nice. Because regardless of the fact that you've bought an E-Class all-terrain, you still want it to be a luxurious car like an E-Class should be. And this car kind of delivers on that. And to my mind, it's for this reason why this is such a compelling car versus an SUV. If you ever need to do any kind of light off-roading or tackle you know, slightly more difficult terrain, this car is more than up for the task. So why would you want an SUV when this really just looks better? It's gonna be way more unique on the road and for my money, just as practical. Now, most people aren't gonna drive it in this type of terrain, they'll just drive it normally, but when you do need to, when you need to do it, this car has that ability. That's all great, but the car's 90% use, as I said, is gonna be just daily activities. And in that regard, it just reminds you of a normal E-Class. And that's great because I think that's exactly what US buyers will want as well, who don't get use of that standard estate. This is just like that car when you drive normally. Man, the tunnels here are absolutely stunning. And I'm really loving the air suspension. This is so great that it comes standard in the old terrain, even though it's, it didn't need to do that as a, you know, an off-roading version of the E-Class. It could have stuck with steel springs. But it's nice that it has the breadth of ability of being really, really quite luxurious. I really like this engine. I really like the suspension. This just feels like a Mercedes-Benz ever so slightly on stilts. So to sum it up, this is essentially very close to a standard E-Class estate, but it's got a few more arrows in its quiver versus that car. We've got a quirkier, more off-roading type design, which is actually really nice, and I think it suits the body of the 214 more than it did the previous generation. 
the ability to do some light off-roading and tackle some terrain that you just wouldn't consider with a normal E-Class. And then to bolster that element, in this generation, we've got the off-roading screens, both in our main screen and in our driver zone here, which give us that much more information in terms of off-roading, and of course, the great invisible bonnet as well. So if you're not married to the idea of an SUV and you want a rough and tough estate that can basically do everything the same, if not better, particularly dynamically, then this is the answer. It's a really good looking all-terrain wagon and a really luxurious Mercedes-Benz. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of RBR. If you have, as always, please do like and subscribe. I hugely appreciate the support and I'll see you guys next time.